As Dave said, my name's Lee DeVette. I am one of you guys. I've got the same scars, the same emotional trauma from when property sales don't close. Uh, I've known Dave, as he said, for over 20 years, and I've had my own agency. I've been part of a big agency. I have had the privilege of being um, part of the number one Harcourt's team for two years, managing the sales team. And I think if I may just take off this morning, um, I, I look for shortcuts in real estate. I often say for the first 15 years of my life, I was, I was getting lucky 50% of the time. And then I started to think outside of the box. And I looked at this industry and thought to myself, the industry can't be that difficult. I mean, why do agents struggle? So what I'm going to be sharing with you this morning and in, in the very short time that we have, um, I normally do a quarter day and half day conferences where we're in a big room and we've got notes and screens. So this is slightly different. But I guarantee you the content will be the same. Um, I'm going to be sharing with you a lot of concepts that I think if you can take home with you uh, and put it into your mind, um, you're going to be different forever and forever. The goal or the objective of, of today's meeting is for you to make more money. Is there anybody that doesn't want to make more money? I think as South Africa changes, and I've been on a roadshow for the last month, talking to agencies all across Cape Town, and really about the being an agent in a changing world. And that changing world is, is that we're living with ESCOM power out. Some of you are sitting right now and maybe in a power out and you've got a reserve battery. I'm actually sitting here in Durbanville, uh, power's out and I've got my reserve battery. I said to someone the other day that I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do before I even greet my wife is I say, if I check the ESCOM schedule, you know, what is my day going to look like? And I think we're learning to live between the lines. Uh, that, that is from, from load shedding to load shedding. So you would find that your productivity should be increasing when the power is on. And then the, the, mon the more mundane things you'll be doing as, you, uh, as the power goes out. But you know, so let me, let me see if I can share my screen. Dave, you can tell me if my screen's going to come on. Um, I want to share a new screen. Let's see. I'm bringing up a PowerPoint. We're good coming up. That's we can see it. You can you can see my screen. I'm going to go into a slideshow mode here. I'm going to go from the beginning. And hopefully, we've got a big screen. Can you see my big screen? Can you can you all see a full screen on your side? Yes, we can. We can see uh, we're seeing your your main slide and the next slide. Uh oh, and and the next slide. Mm -hmm. All right, so I think the, the thing is here, yeah, do I want to share? Let me just go back to the share option here. Screen two. There we you are. The, do you see just the big screen now? There we are. All right, so we're there. Perfect. Let me just pull my stuff right here. All right, so you know, just a, and, and once again, Dave, thank you so much for this opportunity. The, the privilege of talking to agents. I think you're the bravest people in the in the in in every in any industry. Uh, I think that you are already risk takers. One of my messages this year is we've got to take more risk and we've got to become planners. And I'm going to be integrating those two things for us this morning. Um, a big shout out to GSM who sponsored. They this is actually a paid conference, so thank you, thank you to GSM. They paid me. And then of course I've got a lot of respect for EXP. I think it's an amazing model. Um, I also know Steve Johnson. And I'm sure many of you have met him. And I think a really great concept, very suited for a specific type of person. And I think if you're independent and you are ambitious and you like to work on your own, but you want to be productive, I think it's a fantastic model. And I think aligning yourself with Chorus Realty will give you all the, um, all the, all the back office information that you need and the support. And again, as Dave said, we've known each other for over 20 years. We share a similar value system. I believe that we should be adding continued value to our clients. I think at every step of the process, from the prospecting process to the listing, to the, the actual sale that takes place, to the, to the showing and the advertising, I believe that every step of the way should have a large measure or all measure of integrity. And I, I do believe that you can survive and do well in this industry if you're honest. And so everything I'm gonna be sharing with you today comes from a tried and tested point of view. Um, I live not only the values um, that, that I'm going to advocate today, but I also, I'm also in the field, as Dave said. I, uh, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the secrets that, um, that I uh, have developed over the last couple of years, obviously within a very, a very narrow framework.
but I'm going to give you as many gold nuggets as I can this morning that I believe is going to accelerate you, give you that stepping stone to go to the next level. So you're welcome to take notes. Dave is recording the session and I'm going to be, um, I'll also provide a set of notes after each session. So if you miss some of the points, don't worry, they will be there for you. So who am I? Well, there you can see, um, I am an estate agent. Uh, this, that specific slide, and I'll be sharing it throughout the, the training, was a, a defining moment for me. And I'm going to share with you pricing versus positioning on day three um, on how to, how to position a home um, with the client agreeing to the price. And that was a breakthrough. Up until that point, I actually uh, was getting lucky 50% of the time, unlucky 50%. When I had a revelation there, and that's, and that's part of my Superman series, um, I became lucky 95% of the time, which means my close rates, uh, to, uh, listing to close is, is 95%. And uh, th that gentleman there, uh, Eddie Barker, actually worked for, a, worked for a real estate company in Natal, and he gave me a couple of pointers. And as I said, after that, my life was never the same. There you can see my normal conference. Uh, this is an ESI conference. I run workshops, love workshops, love training people, and I love imparting the knowledge and experience that I've got over the years. So let's get right into it. Today's objective, we're going to deal with three specific issues in the time that we have. This session is going to basically run for about 65 minutes. Dave, if I could ask you, um, could I ask everyone just to mute your mic so there won't be any interference? You're also welcome to uh, take off your screens if you want to, your, your cameras. Um, it, it'll just speed up your internet. And then, Dave, if you could give me maybe just a, a, a lead, the time is there at 9.45, because I get so involved, and I've got a small watch here, and so I might just lose track of time, and I don't want to do that, because at 9.45, I want to do so, some questions and answers, and then we'll take a 20-minute break and then come in for the next session. Fantastic. So today, what Dave said, we're going to be doing introduction to lead generation and planning. I'll try to integrate three sessions into two, to two sessions, and then strategic lead generation. What does that mean for me as an agent? Is there a difference from traditional lead generation or is there a higher level that we can go to? And that part I'm going to be sharing with you today. And then we're going to look at the third session just before close today, personal promotion. And there I'm going to give you some tips. In, it's, and it's also all linked to lead generation. I don't want to give you stuff that you already know. And, I, and what I'm trying to do today is just give you something, a perspective outside of the box. And I really believe if you can connect with me today, you're, going to be, you're not going to be the same again. One of my top agents, Lorraine Rue, uh, interned a year ago. Uh, she, she didn't miss any of my training, and she's now within the top five of, of our Harcourt branch, which is the number one Harcourt branch in the country. And Lorraine has just excelled. And, and it's so funny when I talk to her because she sounds just like me. And I've heard her coaching other agents, and she sounds just like me. So I think with one person, I've done something right, and hopefully with Dave's team, I can do something, I can do something great. All right, so I'm going to be sticking to slides today because, as I say, it's very different in this forum, and I know it keeps your concentration. But and, and I'm going to give you some big ideas. And if you haven't thought about these before, these are the kind of things you're welcome to screen grab. But as I say I will create notes for David to give to you guys. But a realtor basically has five revenue-producing activities that require constant attention. Now, what are revenue-producing activities? That's where you make money. And it's a, it's a process. It's a process of making money. And obviously, lead generation is one of the key parts of where you um, will make money. And that's why I'm going to be spending a lot more time on lead generation, because we can talk about getting the listing, but first you have to get the lead. First, you have to find the client. How did you find the client? You went out and you did prospecting. How did you prospect? What's, what's effective and what's not effective? Um, to be honest with you, I see that I see a couple of the bigger groups in our area. They do a lot of cold calling. Um, my own company is cold calling. And the amount of times that they've called me uh, by mistake is just uh, almost embarrassing. So I don't know how effective cold calling is anymore. Steve Johnson, a couple of years ago, spoke about the, the cocooning effect, where people would start uh, living in security estates, harder to get to them. People would start blocking you. I've got true caller on my phone, and I, and I block at least 50% of anything that comes through. So if it's an estate agent or an insurance company, or anybody that I don't want to speak to, my true caller automatically blocks it, and I've got no conscience on that. So that, as an for an agent, that makes it quite difficult for us. Um, and I'm going to share with you. I'm going to share with you today. I'm going to let you in on a secret. Um, on on, and I'll start it in this session, and then we'll continue in the second session. But I do believe, and this has been so successful with Harcourts and my top agents, that I'm I'm, I'm so excited to share it with you guys today. 
So you've got five revenue producing activities. When you when you start in the beginning of the month, you've got to know that lead generation is at the top. You need to secure listings, then you need to negotiate successfully, and then you need to close the sale. We're going to be talking about closing techniques. Not a lot of them, but just the, the, the ones that I think are important. I, as I said, I don't think you need to spend hours and hours and hours trying to negotiate. I think if you can if you start correctly, it's like any race. If you get a good start, the end, the, the end is inevitable and you will go over the line quickly. And that's what I'm going to try and show you today is that how to, how to get that good start. And that comes in our prospecting and our price negotiations, which we'll deal with in listings tomorrow. And then, of course, you've got to close the sale because that's where you get paid. And then, of course, something that our industry tends to be quite lazy on, and, and even in, in where, where I come from, um, this wasn't really in the forefront, but learning your scripts and dialogues for each and every sales situation is so important. And I'm going to show you six, six uh, areas that you can earn money into today. And, and those obviously, those six specific areas need a different pitch. Now, notice when I train the agents and we, and we do role plays, most of them kind of have the same, the same pitch, regardless of the situation. And I do believe we're intelligent enough to make those adjustments. So those are your five revenue producing activities. And this is, this is essential for an estate agent to know, because if you're not lead generating, you won't secure a listing. If you don't secure a listing, you cannot negotiate the listing. You cannot close the sale. And obviously, to get to those points, you need to know your scripts and dialogues. How do I deal with an A-type personality? How do I deal with, a, with, a, with an influencer? How do I deal with an accountant? How do I deal with someone that's shy and reserved? How do I deal with someone that doesn't want to work? So your scripts and dialogues make room to be able to adjust. And we, and we need to adjust. And it's not, it's not difficult because there are not that many scenarios, but adjust you must. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allude to one of those aspects today. So the first part of our morning is introduction to lead generation and planning, and I've integrated the lead generation and the planning uh, into one module. And I think most of you will know this specific um, picture, and the picture on the right over here is the AIDA funnel. And if you're in sales, if you're in real estate, you need to have a sales funnel. Why? Because lead generation is the lifeblood of your business. There is no other way. You need to be generating leads if you want to make money. Uh, and this is the answer to every realtor's prosperity. And I and I find it almost, uh, I can't actually believe it, that when, when agents join us, that the first thing we start to, we start getting them involved in the logbook, which is most of, most of, if not all of us, we start them with the logbook and then we get them on the NQ4 and then we're moving them towards PDE. Why? Because you do need a license and compliance is one of the keys that you need to have to be able to stay in this industry. But we don't ever teach them lead generation. And I don't know if there's, there's some sort of conspiracy out there that we, we do it after the guys are qualified, which we don't want to invest resources. Whereas I think if you can get an agent out of the starting blocks, straight into lead generation, in weeks and if not months, he starts to produce. There's nothing worse than sitting for six months, for a year, and you're not producing. So another big idea here is that lead generation is the lifeblood of your business. And I'm going to unpack that for you, for you today. Now, I know there's many of you that have got lots of experience. Um, and some of you that are brand new to the industry, what I'm trying to do today is just share some big ideas that whether you're new in the industry or whether you've been you're a seasoned agent, um, if you're open-minded today, you're going to learn something, I guarantee you. And, and that one thing that you might learn might just be the difference between making a million this year or making 500,000. My, and my heart is that you would make over a million this year. And I'm sure Dave would agree with me on that. So let's just quickly look at the left-hand side of the slide. If you've got no leads, you're not lead generating, then you've got no new business. You'll have no income. And basically, it's a slow death. Now, I've spoken to Steve Johnson, and I can, I can attest to this both in, the, in, in our Harcourt's environment, is that, is that we've got an 80-20 situation. We've got 20% of the agents making most of the money and 80% of them just hanging around out there. And there's a reason for that. I'm going to, I'm going to show you because I've, I saw this my coaching and mentoring, uh, especially the young interns, which I had the privilege of working with. And about 50% of them really go on to make money and 50% kind of dwindle and, 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 and disappear. And the reason for that is um, they're either not motivated enough or they've chosen the wrong profession. And, and let's be honest, not everybody's suited for real estate. As David said, it's kind of tough. Uh, it is a tough industry, but also as, um, I just want to think of his name, well, anyway, one, one, of the, one of the top guys, and it'll come to me soon, said that basically uh, real estate is, the, is, is an amazing way to get rich if you're willing to work hard. And I want to say if you're willing to work smart and hard, you can be super rich. So you're in an amazing profession. Well done for joining this industry. 
Um, and I'm going to ho hopefully smooth things over today and make it a little bit easier. So the question really is, what are you doing to attract new clients to your value proposition daily, weekly, and monthly? Are you waking up in the morning and you're taking a couple of days off? You maybe thinking Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, oh, I'm not really so great. I'll pick off on Thursday and Friday. Are you are you actually um, are you actually committed to the process of making money? So you need to be doing something every day. I don't believe you have to work seven days a week as an agent. I think you can work smart. You can work five days. And I'm not going to tell you which five days to work. I generally take off a Monday and I generally take off a Friday. If Saturdays and Sundays are committed to show houses and viewings. Um, so I try and get as much time in during the week and try not to use my weekends. And there again is a change of mindset. But let's just quickly look again. And there's your sales funnel. So I'm planting a seed today. Every one of you need to know you must have a sales funnel. And how does that sales funnel work? Well, you need to attract clients to your to yourself firstly, because you're the key to the property. As a result of attracting people to yourself, you will then uh, uh, get properties and you'll be able to sell. So there's a there's awareness that you need to create, and that I'm I'm not going to get too involved in the marketing that you do, but I am going to show you some key aspects. Uh, am I generating enough interest around my services? Can I lead people to make a decision to choose me? And and will they then will that translate into action? And that action is you you've been prospecting, you're adding value to your community, um, you're a beacon within your community, not just another agent. And as a result, people will know you, like you, and trust you. I'm going to be sharing a bit about that. I'm going to say it again. People must know you. So how do we become visible? How we use marketing to do that? People must like you. In other words, they need to want to communicate with you and they must be able to trust you. There's that trust factor that you want to carry within your business. And once you, once you attain that with a client, chances are that client will be your client for life. And Dave and I come out of a um, come out of a place with Steve Johnson where we learned about the client appreciation program and it's how to secure and how to how to nurture that client over the years so that you don't just get the new business, but you get the referral business. And that's a large aspect of our of what we do. So the next slide is, is also another big idea. And I said to you that lead generation is the lifeblood of all realtors. And this is from your cash to your pension. If you want to, if you want to retire early, if you want to retire one day and you're in real estate, you need cash. So there are two aspects to lead generation. And this was something that my, my business partner, another training coach, and I, over, over numerous conversations, we realized that there, there was a misunderstanding. And I want to clear that misunderstanding today. Lead generation is not just about prospecting also about marketing. And if you look there to the left of my screen, you'll see the, the, there's the marketing side of lead generation. That's the part that's visible. That's what the, the community and the client will see. And the other side is the prospecting side. That's the action part. And you can see I put percentages there. And um, these are safe percentages, but you should be spending 80% of your time uh, prospecting and 20% of your time marketing. Now, don't get confused between the two because we had a, one, a, a young lad by the name of Matthew and Matthew was, he was always in the office and he was always working and he was always doing something, but he never sold anything. And we just couldn't, we just couldn't piece it together. And one day in a one-on-one, -on -one, I asked him to share his week with me. And I realized that, that Matthew was spending 100% of his time marketing, trying to become uh, uh, visible. And he was hoping that somebody would notice him. And he was an excellent marketer. But unfortunately, marketing alone um, will not produce the results you need. The face-to-face the -face contact in the prospecting side is what you really need. And if you look at what marketing involves, and this is what he was spending a lot of time in. He was on Facebook. He was on, he was on Twitter. He was on Instagram. He was on all the right portals. And his, and, his, and his content was beautiful, but he never generated a lead. I'm going to show you why. So your marketing side is branding, your social media, your roadshows, and your show houses. These are all what people see. But remember, that will only get people to know you. So that's the no part. Of, the, of, of your real estate career. This media makes clients aware of your brand and your service, but does not necessarily draw sellers. Now, sellers where we make money, and if you've got bond origination, comms and um, pre-approvals and things, you'll make money on buyers as well. But the, the, it's very important that lead generation consists of these two parts. And, and be careful that uh, don't become a Matthew uh, and get caught up. In, and so you're busy, but you're busy with, with stuff that doesn't really matter immediately. You, yes, marketing has a part. And, and even in our company, a lot of the marketing takes place in the background. We don't have to get too involved in the marketing until we actually market in a home or we break it into an area or we need to get that visibility. 
So again, the danger is that when you when you don't understand the difference between prospecting and marketing, you tend to because it's the easy way out to get stuck in the marketing side. That produces very little or low results. But the second part, now this is the prospect. Now this is the part that I like. And, and, and I must tell you, in the beginning, it was nerve-wracking. But when I got this revelation, I realized that this is where I'm going to make money. So prospecting has got two aspects, adding new context to your database consistently. So that means you need to be out in the field. And the other one is connecting with your past clients consistently. And that's where your CRMs or your customer care programs come in. And what, is that? and what does that mean? It means face-to-face and personal contact. It's proactive. And then you've got your email campaigns, which are, are passive. So, but but all, all the time on your prospecting side, it's engagement. I always use the analogy that if you are you play for Western Province, and I know there's probably some Blue Bull supporters here, but if you play for province and you and you're sitting on the bench or you're sitting in the stand, you're not really in the game. You may have intel on the game, you may be skilled, but if you're not on the field, you're not in the game. And at the end of the game, if you if you if you're the winning side, you're going to be celebrating with a winning team. So real estate is a contact sport. And that's why I put so much emphasis on prospecting. And that's why I went to look for things in the industry that would make prospecting easier. But first I had to understand why people don't uh, prospect. And there are a couple of reasons for that. So I hope that, that this idea that lead generation consists of these two different parts will stick with you. And I will make this slide available to you as part of your notes because, because this was a defining moment with, with, with the company that I'm in. Um, when we began to understand the difference between the marketing and the prospecting. And obviously our emphasis is on prospecting. And this is where we put our new agents into the field early, but we teach them and train them. And I'm going to show you keys today that, that you'll be taught and trained today. All right. So marketing, just in short, can be likened to the lever that draws attention to you and your brand. This is, a, this is proactive visibility uh, creation. And it's, you should be spending 20% on marketing. So be careful that you don't spend all day on Facebook and not go out into the field. Prospecting is the lever that you use to reach clients by being present. And the emphasis there is on present. And it's proactive contact. 80% of your time should be spent here. And it's in the prospecting side that you actually make money. Your marketing should support your prospecting, but your prospecting should drive your marketing. I hope that I hope that comes across clearly. So lead generation starts with two plans. And again, Guys, my, my training is not conventional. I didn't stick to a book or a manual over here. Um, I've read the books and the manuals, but I've also tried to step out of the out of the traditional way of looking at property and planning and that. And so what I'm going to be sharing with you today, you might not have thought of, but I think it's important enough to say, listen, if you get these, these key things right, you will um, you will have a clearer path. I often use the story that in, in, in the old days, I want to say, when we used to come down from Pretoria, and I hail from Pretoria, uh, grew up there, uh, used Afrikaans only for self-defense, uh, found myself very happy here in Cape Town, having to use a lot of things, <coughs> although around us are many Afrikaners. But my dad used to take us down to Natal, to the coast, and he had this big AA map, which used to unfold and open, and you never got it together again. Um, but he would draw a line from Pretoria, in those days called Pretoria, and he would draw a line down to KwaZulu-Natal or to Natal, and, and he would have to stop along the way. And in those days, the petrol stations weren't open 24 hours a day. They would close at five o'clock. So if you reached the petrol station at 4.50, you would fill up and then you would be able to push through. If you didn't make a petrol station, you basically slept at the petrol station or the local caravan park. So there was planning involved. And if you deviated, you would get lost. And the thing is, in real estate, we often come into real estate and we don't have a plan. We just kind of hope to get lucky. And I, and, I, and I do believe that, you know, even in our schooling systems, we were trained to sort of come to school and, and eventually the results is you pop out at the trick without much planning. And that, that sort of follows us into our careers. And so lead generation starts with two plans. And I think it was, uh, oh, it wasn't, it was Pablo Picasso says, our goals can only be reached through a vehicle of a plan in which we must fervently believe and upon which we must vigorously act. There is no other route to success. So the big idea uh, and in this part is that you need to have a plan. And there are two plans that I like to talk about. And they often get mishmashed together and we talk about one specific plan. But I believe that your personal life plan should drive your business plan and not the other way around. Because you can become so busy in your business that you don't have a life. But if, you're, but if, you're, if your business is complementing your life plan, I believe that you're going to enjoy what you do. You're going to do more than what you would do. And, and, you're going, and you're going to see the results and the fruits of that. 
So I believe in two plans, but what, is, what do both plans need to have in common? So these plans, there's six elements of any plan, and that's what we call the SMART goals. And this is really, this, this, is, this has been around for years. And I also put there something called the BHAG. Um, why? The end goal. What, why are you in real estate? What is the driver, the motivator for you in real estate? Um, do, you want to get, do you want to retire rich? Do you want to retire soon? But that's called what we call the big, hairy, audacious goal. And I'll make these slides available for you too. So what, if you were to close your eyes now and imagine a preferable future, what would that be? And then, of course, now that I know that I've got this uh, where I want to be, same as my dad wanted to get us down to Natal, that was the goal that we could have a, have a holiday there. Um, he, he had a plan. So what is your plan to get where you want to be? You need to have the end in mind in order to start. And then, of course, and I'm not going to labor this too much, but your, your goals need to be very specific. Make sure that they're specific and accurate. Yes, I want to retire by 60. I want to pay my car off in, in the next 18 months. Um, I want to get a degree. Um, I, I started studying. I haven't finished. I want to finish that. So your goals need to be very specific. And here's the big key, ladies and gentlemen, is your goals must be written down. It's, it's not enough to have it in your head. And for years and years, I had lots of plans in my head. But obviously, I realized afterwards that I never got anywhere. So it always bothered me. And they did a survey in, in about 1974 with an MBA class in America. And the class consisted of about 100 people. And at the end of their, their studies, they did a survey. And this is where this theory came from. And they asked the class, you know, who had, uh, who had goals and dreams and aspirations? And obviously, everybody put their hands up. The second question was, um, are they written down? And the class, only a handful of people put their hands up. So what they discovered, there were three categories. There were those that were just hoping to get lucky. They thought their degree would, would be the supporting um, structure for them and they would automatically be successful because they had an MBA. And they didn't really think too much about their future. They were happy to just go and join a company and climb the ladder. The second group actually had a plan for their lives. They knew where they wanted to be, and that, but they didn't write it down. And the third group, wrote this down, they knew where they wanted to be and they wrote it down and they had it in front of them. And the result was 10 years later, they went back and they, they revisited the MBA guys that they could meet with and they discovered that, the, that those that had no, uh, no real ambition, but they, they relied on the, on the current skill sets and going to companies, they found that these guys were making, were making good money, but it, but it, it was fair, it was fair market price. They, they weren't ambitious, they didn't dream big and they were where they were because of what they were thinking. The second group of people that knew where they wanted to be but hadn't written it down, they found that they made two times as much as the previous group. But here was the kicker, and this was only about 3% of the class. The 3% of the class that had goals and wrote them down ended up making 10 times more than the second group. And, that was, and, that's, and that's something that's been shared in business schools um, for many, many years. And so I want to say to you today that if you've, got a, if you've got a dream, write it down. If you've got goals, write it down. And they need to be very specific. They need to be, they need to be measurable. Put in switch. <laughs> there we go. All right. So they must be specific. They must be measurable. You must be held accountable. Uh, my wife looks at my at my goals for the for the year on the fridge, and she says, "Have you reached these?" It can be painful sometimes, but it's, it's accountability. Are they realistic? You know, dream big, aim high, but make your goals very realistic, uh, given your situation, your personal capacity, and your other priorities. Now, if you're 60 years old and you're watching this and you're watching this session, um, you haven't got 30 years uh, to get a bond anymore. You've probably got 10 years to get a bond or maybe 20 years. So again, you need to be realistic in terms of your goals, but it's not impossible in this industry to take out a bond at 60 and pay it off in 10 years if you're working smart. And obviously they need to be time bound. We knew that my dad wanted to take us down to the coast on the 6th of December and we'd be back on about 15th of December. So he knew that the 6th was the departure time. So what do your goals look like? So these are just six elements that you need to have built into your goals. These are some of the things that you should have in your personal plan. Remember, I said your personal plan should dictate your business plan and not the other way around. That's in my opinion. If you go to a business school, they'll tell you it's the other way around. Your business must determine your life. I don't know how that's going to work out for them. But you need to have family goals. You need to have spiritual goals, social goals, my health goals, my financial goals, and my career goals, and then anything else that you can think of. So those... Those should be the things that you don't you don't just write down lightly, but you actually sit down and maybe after this afternoon, if you've got an hour or two, maybe say, listen, you know, Lee triggered something in me. I I I, I haven't considered those things. 
Because ladies and gentlemen, these are the, it's your, it's your personal goals that are going to drive you when you're demotivated. When you get up in the morning and the market's looking shabby, haven't had a good week, these things that get you up in the morning, that you realize I, I've still got these goals for my family. Yes, have a bad day, pick yourself up and, and, and re-look at your goals and this should motivate you. And then what should your business plan look like? And this is, this is something that in this session we don't have the time to do, but you should know why you're in business. What is your big, hairy, audacious goal? Uh, for me, it's to, it, it is to retire at 60, have my house paid up and have, to have at least two income producing properties and to have everything paid up. I don't want to have to work too hard when I'm 60. So those goals are written down. There's a specific timeline. There's specific points that I've got to get to uh, over the next couple of years. I'm not going to give away my age, but I'm slightly older than David. Uh, so I haven't got that much time. So my, 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 my timeline is a lot shorter. But you should look at, looking at the values and the purpose of, what, of what, what your business is doing. And every one of you as an agent is in business for yourself. That's, that's the other big idea is you not, even though you might be associated with a brand, even though I'm associated with a brand, at the end of the day, I'm working for myself. They can't drive me out there. They, they're not going to pay my bills if I don't make money. I work for myself. And in that, I've got to make the best of my time. So I need to know how much income I, do, I require, how many exclusive mandates do I want to get for the year. And these things you write down. Remember, if you don't write them down, they don't exist. If you write them down and you're wrong, that's okay. You can make adjustments. But you must write them down. How many, how many of those exclusive mandates? I've got 20 mandates. How many am I, am I going to convert to sales? You should be able to convert 100% of them. How many new clients am I going to uh, put into my database? Now, new clients should include clients that aren't going to use you right now, but that you've met them through prospecting, that they would, uh, um, they would, if you look after them, become you would become their preferable agent in the future. I remember a, a Remax agent one telling me, also on the Provident Sports, sharing with me and saying, you know, if you're not the agent of choice, then any agent will do. And, and that means that if you don't have a presence in your area, if you don't have a presence in your community, um, and, and somebody wakes up on a specific day and they're looking for an agent, they'll probably choose the first board that they see. Hopefully it's yours, but if it's not, um, they will choose another agent. So are you the, are you the agent of choice? So are you, have you got a presence in the area? Are you just looking for people that want to sell? Are you building a sales funnel that will sustain you in the future? How many referrals do I want to get? Referrals are powerful, my friends. And you guys can, re, you can refer across provinces because you're part of the EXP group. Um, what are you, how many referrals do you actually want? Because that's what's going to do this money. Prospecting. How many prospecting calls and door knocks do I want to do in the year? And, and, and the way you do that is you decide how many you want to do in a month. You multiply it by, I want to say not 12 months, but 10 months, because realistically, we can only work for about 10 months of the year, even though we'll be in the field for 12. Um, December is a write off. You're going to be very low productivity. In January is probably a write off for prospecting. You might be handing deals, but you're not going to really be able to meet clients in the community because most of them are going to be away or shut down. And then open homes, roadshows, social media campaigns. How many of these are, am I going to do? My personal development, what training and workshops do I want to do this year? What do I want to attain? Do I need to get my, my PDE this year? Do I need to get my NQ4 logbook? My SWOT analysis, what are, what are, if I look at myself as a business, what are my strengths and weaknesses, opportunities and threats? Um, that, that, that's something maybe David can take you through because I know he, he understands that. What are my quarterly targets? So I've got, I've, I know I need to make a million a year. That means quarterly, I need to, one, I need to be doing about 250,000 uh, every quarter. How do I get to 250,000? Well, I break it into, I divide it into uh, three and then I divide it into weeks and then I divide it into days. What are my key focus areas? Every quarter, you can have a different focus area. This year, this quarter, I'm focusing on, on, my, on my prospecting. Next quarter, I'm going to focus on my customer care program. Uh, which, which still includes the others. And, and so you need to have key focus areas. Uh, celebration and reward. How will I celebrate achieving, achieving my targets? Okay. Some of you could be that big ribbon on the, on the new car that you're going to buy at the end of the year, but don't buy the car until, you, until you've met your targets. You want, to, you want to either be paying cash for that or you want to have earned it, but you don't want to go buy a car for the sake of buying a car and then having to fund it through your, through your property. Rather let your property fund a car. That's going to take a lot of pressure off you. Are you living the values of your company? Are you living the values that, that you aspire to? Are you accountable? That is, and that's all you've got to have in your business plan. Again, these notes will be made available. So in short, in, in summary to the planning, without a written planning place, you're simply rolling the dice with your future. Tom Ferry said that. Um, and, that and that goes all through his training. 
I'm going to be giving David not just this sheet, but this is a this is an annual planner. Um, it's, it's, it's a bit grainy now because I had to enlarge it. But I'm going to give Dave this plan, and I'll give it to you at the end of the session. I'll email it to him. It's an A3. You can print this, and, and there you can put your personal goals, and you can put your business goals. You can put your accountability in there. You can put the focus areas. Everything I just showed you, you can put into this specific sheet. And let this sheet be, if not your first, your only written plan. That's going to drive you for the rest of the year. We're already in month five. That means that there isn't a lot of time left this year. So you don't want to you don't want to waste time. And you know what? You know what's a good time to start today. Any time that you understand a plan is a good time to plan, and you can adjust it along the way. So when you wake up in January the first next year, 2024, uh, hopefully not in the dark, you will you you'll, you'll know that the plan that you had, you're going to make adjustments, and you can have a 12 month opportunity to start planning. I think that's super exciting. Are there any questions at this point? I don't want to. I don't want to move on to lead generation yet. Any questions? Any thoughts? Maybe you just want to share. You're welcome to put your mics on and just give me some feedback. So you're either all bowled over. <laughs> um, it's flippant powerful. Um, I would say, Lee, and I mean that. It's like you kind of we, we're drinking out of a fire hydrant here. There's a mass amount of detail. Uh, well, mass amount of power in this. And, and what I'd like to do, um, and I'm very, uh, I would love to do it with, with teams of three or four people, um, you know, next week, I'll gladly um, set up teams of three or four, by three people, four people in a team, which will then go through uh, that spreadsheet uh, or that, that form, and we can then fill it in, uh, in uh, amongst the team. Um, it's very powerful. So I love that. Um, Solomon, you want to go? Yeah. Um, can you can you hear me? Yes, Solomon, I can. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So, thank you so much, uh, Lee. Um, such a privilege to be able to be receiving um, such substance. Um, a lot of these we actually have heard. Um, you know, especially the whole thing of planning, and um, but I'm thinking more the whole thing of accountability, um, whether you guys have got a structure that you have slash mentoring that you can be able to take people through because uh, you've got different people. Other people are motivated and they're able to take some of these principles and apply. But not everybody's able to immediately like kick off from where they are and, and apply that as well so i don't know if you've got a mini <laughs> mini plan where people can can actually slash be mentored into be able to apply uh, thank you solomon and that's a that's a good question and i, and I see your desire there so solomon what i'm going to do is i'm going to empower david so this is the the framework that i'm giving you today i'm going to empower david to be able to get your business plans up and running um, if that's not enough, David can make the call. But I do do a course based on what um, I'm, I, I was coached by Tom Ferry. And I do have a planning course, which starts with your, your life plan. About a, it's also about a two-hour session. And I can do that online with you. And then I take you through the different steps. And then, and then you can decide after that if, if it's enough and you can hold yourself accountable or you've got an accountability partner, then, then, then that's great. If you need to take the next step, then what I do is I talk with Dave. And we, and we talk about either me holding you accountable or Dave holding you accountable. But I, I know to a large extent, if you will just, the hardest part is completing the plan, getting out of the starting block. Once you've done that, you will, uh, I believe that the, your confidence will grow and your plan will become your new reality. So yes, we, we, we can help you. I'm going to help Dave first off, off, after this week, and then he's going to help you. And then we can make a call and see, do we need more uh, or, or are you sufficiently running by yourselves? Thank you for that question, Solomon. But the last thing, Solomon, is this is why uh, this is what we do within the chorus group, and and I want to do it with deep respect for those not within chorus. Um, so um, and, and maybe you can get that from your principals. But uh, this is what um, Solomon. What I want to do is start next week and just have it, you know, strike while the iron's hot. Is that I will reach out to uh, groups of three at a time, uh, both within chorus and external chorus, um, free of charge, just to help and um, help everyone just be accountable with that plan. Uh, I'm sure Carmen may be doing it with her team anyway, um, but yeah, I, I would, uh, I'm willing to help at least initially. Okay. 
Okay. Any, any other last questions? Then I'm going to move on to the, to the strategic lead generation. This is going to take us into our, the, the, the second part of our session, but it's also going to, it's also going to lead up to the, the break as well. Let me just look at time, 9.24, and I need, so I need to rush this one. Don't want to rush it. Okay, so guys, thank you again. Solomon, good question there, and I, and I hope that answer was sufficient. So the next part is, let me move here. Um, okay, strategic lead generation. Now, this is an outside-of-the-box thinking exercise. I have reworked it to, it's completely different. There's, there, I want to say there's no one else that, has this perspective, except except the people that I've coached and trained. But there's a difference between uh, lead generation and strategic lead generation. So strategic lead generation is is to be very is to be very specific about how you're going to approach your market. And I want to say at, at this point of the meeting that um, the, the, you get two types of agents. You get a generalist agent, which kind of works everywhere, and that's and that's most companies. You know you. You don't have a specific farming area. You're all over the place. You're working from, from one town to the next or one suburb to the next. And then you've got what we call your specific um, agents. And, and these are your farming specialists. And I want to say that my experience over time has been that those that are specialists, those that specialize in, in, in an area and become what I call the mayor of that area. You're influential. Everybody knows you. You're the agent of choice. Do 10 times better. Than if you're a generalist, so I want to I want to show that today. If you're a generalist, that's okay. But what I'm going to show you today is to help you to become a specialist. So, emphasis this morning on lead generation. How do we get you into the field? Well, I use an old war story from the World War II, and this is part of our Superman series, or not our Superman series, our Super Agent series, where we also go through a mental process. There are ten things that we want to focus on to get you up and running, and it takes about it takes about four or five months for you for us to put you through our academy, but this specific and, I, and I'm drawing from I'm drawing from this. So this isn't out of the textbook. This is out of one of my training programs. Um, establishing an area dominance. Oops, who changed that? Uh, establishing. Can you all see that screen? You can see the boats on the water. Everybody can see that. Yes. Okay. Yes. So the, the, the distinction I want to draw here is you can be a generalist in your in your community or in your town, or you can be a specialist. And I'm going to take you down the road of a specialist, and you can decide if there's merit to it afterwards. So I, 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 I'm, I'm of the school that says you need to have an area dominance where there's currently none. So look for those opportunities in an area where maybe there are not a lot of agents. You might say to yourself, but there are not a lot of sales here either. I'm going to help you overcome that. Uh, gaining market share in a systematic, consistent, and structured way. So, so there is a system to, to go into your area. That need, you need to consistently apply the principles, and there needs to be a structure. And the, and the information, and where this came, also thank you to Matthew, who came to me one day, sheer frustration, hours and hours of marketing, said to me, Lee, I don't know really where to start, to be honest with you. And I said to him, and I don't know where the thought came from, I said, Matthew, you need to have a beachhead. I'd heard that somewhere along the along our training cycles, you need to create a beachhead. And he said to me, what is a beachhead? And I said to him, it's a starting point within your area. Like sometimes it's just a starting point within your career. And he said to me, I don't know what you mean. And I was honest. I said, I don't really have more information on that. I will go and explore and give me two weeks and I'll come back. And I went and looked what a beachhead is. And essentially what you're looking at there, you're looking at the beaches of Normandy, the Second World War. When the war got to such a place that... In a desperate attempt, the Allied armies, which was a collection of other armies, landed on, on specific points on Normandy in order to push Germany back that was, that was trying, to, trying to rule the world in possibly the cruelest way possible. So there, there was a point in time where they became, and, I, and I'm going to use this word, where they became hurtful for the Germans. So enough is enough. My question today with you is when is enough is enough? Are you, are you satisfied with what you have and what you're doing? Or have you reached that point where you just said, look, enough is enough. I need a new strategy. And they knew there would be risk on this day. They knew there would be costs, and they knew that they and they knew that they that victory could be assured if they took this attempt. So they, they hit the beaches of Normandy, and they pushed the German armies back. Eventually, they squeezed them into a, a grip, and they pushed them out because that was the obstacle to, to progress. So, what are the obstacles to your progress today? And I think for most of you online today, it's probably the fact that you're not specialist in your area. So, I want to advocate that you that that what I'm going to show you 
will give you the tools to become a specialist in your area. On the slide, which I said lead generation is the lifeblood of your business, you can see where my circle is there, and that's your face-to-face -face personal contact. I, I believe that this is where the money is made, is in face-to-face. -face. Everything else uh, will complement what you do, but this is the first part. And this, and this again, this takes time. You can imagine those young soldiers on that day, they had a big defeat at Dunkirk a couple of years before. These guys are heading for the beach. They're terrified, but they know if they don't hit the beach, if they don't do what they're supposed to do, there can be no victory. The victory can only come with, with a price or a cost. Fortunately for us, it's not that severe, but it's going to take courage and it's going to take, it's going to be a challenge for some of you. But I'm going to show you how to make it easy. This is my this is my Superman series where we focus, my super agent series, where we focus on the on, on uh, and I believe that there are 10 key areas that agents need to know. They're not that difficult. Most of it you're doing it, uh, but without even realizing it, except it's all in a it's like a lucky packet. All the different things are in one bag and you haven't really seen the differences. So what I did was I went into this lucky packet, pulled them out, put them into categories, and now we focus on the categories. So I'm going to focus on those two green categories. I'm going to show you something called the beachhead today, specific farming area, and actionable prospecting plan. We already know that we need to create a sales funnel. And where do we start today? Um, we need to create a sales funnel. So there's a reason that agents don't... Um, do lead generation and lead generation. I'm talking about the prospecting side. And many agents don't start to prospect because they haven't developed the techniques to do it or they quit trying before they were successful. And you've got to know when you're coming to real estate, there is, even if it's not implied, it's expressed, you need to be a prospector. Uh, real estate companies are looking for prospectors. When we do roles and responsibilities, we do a course called the Fantastic Four. The first role that, the, the first role that you have uh, as an agent is you need to be a planner, and then you need to be a prospector, and then you need to be a negotiator, and then you need to be a closer. So when, when you join a sales career, whether you're selling photocopies or property, when you join a sales company, the assumption is that you are a prospector or you will become a prospector. So this skill can be learned that anyone can do this. So if you're thinking that your heart's racing right now, as mine did a couple of years ago, when they start talking about prospecting and specifically role plays, which we don't have time to do, um, your heart starts to rash. Why? Because because you either haven't been taught um, what to do, or you or you just you just avoid it altogether. And um, I'm going to teach you some of those skills today. I'm going to say it's actually easier than than you think. And by the end of this workshop, you'll have a, a couple of fundamental understandings and tools for effective lead generation. I'm hoping that you'll run out at one o'clock today when we finish, and you'll go out and uh, and do your do your stuff, and, and at least start to plan how to do a beachhead. So beachhead, really, the Webster defines it as an area on a hostile shore or land occupied by the enemy. So right now, if you're not an area specialist, then most of your suburbs and your areas and your communities are those hostile shores. And they're either occupied by other agents or unknown people. A beachhead is a vantage point to secure the, the, the further landing of troops and supplies. In other words, there has to be a place that you can start at that you can push supplies through and you can push your influence through. And it's also a foothold or a strategic position to be secured before moving forward. So I'm going to show you today a starting point um, in prospecting that we call a beachhead or we use, we allude to the beachhead, which you can create in your community and then obviously start to work from that point. Um, a generalist will, will kind of draw a map, look, look down, look over the area and wonder where the heck do I start? And that's what I realized was the number one problem in my, with, with, with my agents in coaching them. As Matthew said, I don't know where to start. I'm going to give you a starting point today, but I'm going to give you the tools that, uh, that are going to complement your starting point. Creating a beachhead early in your career is crucial in succeeding as a real estate professional. That's my opinion, and that's, and that's been what I, where I've seen the success comes from. So you won't hear about a beachhead in real estate circles. This is, the, this is unique to, to my platform, but now I'm giving it to you. I hope for in the generations in time, you'll talk about a beachhead. Um, and whether you're a seasoned agent or a new agent, a beachhead is so important. You need a starting point. You might be a seasoned agent, might be a generalist and not yet a specialist. I want to move into the specialist category. These are a couple of the rules that we have to, that, 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 I, that I created for my agents. And I said, fear is temporary, but regret lasts forever. Are you scared of prospecting? Because if you are, you may have a lot of regrets in the future. If you've been a seasoned agent and you haven't really been a successful prospector, then you've lost a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of opportunities historically, but you can change that today. Fear is the one factor that holds us back. 
And fear is not really rooted in anything. My definition of fear is it's false evidence, which appears real. It's really just a feeling and an, and an emotion that, that we have. Um, and if we, can, if we can learn to subdue our fear, we'll be able to move forward. And fear is, uh, you can overcome fear by setting those personal goals, and setting those business plans, and then sticking to it, because that becomes the driving force. So when fear creeps up, you just move away from it. And then uh, George Adia said, everything you've ever wanted is sitting on the other side of fear. So if you want to make more money and you're fearful, you need to overcome this fear. But, but sometimes overcoming fear is easy to say, but hard to do. So I believe if you've got the skills to do it. There are a couple of things that, that, that drive our beachhead process. And that is that you need, to be, you need to be willing to go further than your previous expectations. So what have you been done up to now? You need to you have to take you out of your comfort zone. Um, keep moving forward and don't get pinned down. You're going to have good days and bad days in the field. I've been out on so many excursions with my agents, especially the new guys, and we and we just I just block off an area on the street and we go and we call and 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 we can discuss what are optimal times and not. The 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 first part of that thing is helping them overcome their fear. And you know when we go out, I can see they're reluctant. I can see that they are holding back and excuses and suddenly developed a cold and a headache and the kid got sick just to avoid going out and prospecting and confronting. But the reality is, is that's what you need to do because when you overcome those fears, the rest of real estate is actually very easy. So we've got to keep moving forward and we don't get pinned down. You complete the mission. What was your target for the area? What is your goals for the year? Complete the mission. Don't let fear stop you from victory. If the, if the Allied armies have suddenly got halfway across the channel, in 1945, June the 6th, and they suddenly became fearful and they turned around. They probably, and we probably would have been ruled by Germany today. But because of these brave men and women that even they were they had fear, did not turn back. They, they we, we live the fruits of, of, of that of that bravery. And you need, if you're an estate agent today, you need to be brave. Your family needs you, your company needs you, your community needs you. We need agents out there to bridge the gap between buyers and sellers. Uh, honest. Uh, honest agents that are that, that, that have got the community and the values that they carry and they carry them to the community. Focus on the price. And um, I'm going to share with you a, a formula called the 100 KLT, which is the no like and trust. And then of course, stop, knock, drop, and roll. So these are the fundamentals. What is stop, drop, uh, stop, knock, drop, and roll? That means, and ladies and gentlemen, I, I might run short time at the end, and this I want to say up front. When you do a flyer distribution, which most agents are inclined to want to do, do not put it into a post box and run away. That is not courage. That is stupidity. And, 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 we, and, and, and I've proved this over and over when we take our teams into the community and we will not let them put a flyer into a box and walk away. Why? Because when we open those boxes of, of communities and clients, we see there's a ton of them. And only people benefiting from or the only thing benefiting from those flyers in the post boxes are the snails. Snails and spiders. Makes a perfect nest. So you're spending fortune on, on flyers and you're putting them out into the communities and you're outsourcing it and they're going to the boxes and, and you, you wonder and wait when you're going to get a call and you don't get a call. You know why, ladies and gentlemen? Because the post office system has collapsed. People used to get their bills and their tickets and their fines and their newsletters in the post and they went to the post every day. They don't do that anymore. There's an obsolete system. So why we say is you stop, you take your flyer, you've got a beautiful marketing flyer now, and I'm going to show you a couple of ideas and you knock on the door you greet the client. There's a way that you greet him. You hand it into his hand. You know, every year someone reaches out for something, someone else will take it, and then and then you roll away and you go to the next house. So already up front, whatever I teach you today does not include flyers in the post boxes because it does not work. But back to our story. Um, Germany was basically taking over the whole of Europe. They came in as a hostile force. They had no integrity. They had a vision which drove them. They were, they were super smart. Um, but they, they, they weren't really the good guys on the block, and they, they created chaos. Now, you may have agents in your area that are, are, are either disappointing, or they're dishonest, or they simply don't have integrity, or they just don't function right. And, and, and so, so you, you need to note this, or you need to look at areas and say, look, this land hasn't been, um, no, there are no other agents or agencies in this area. I'm going to become the agent of choice here, because I know that if someone doesn't have an agent of choice, any agent will do so, so we see that there's a problem we need to identify. The problem might just be that you don't have enough business now, but, but the secret lies within that area and becoming a specialist. So your goal 
in your area, as it was in the Second World War, is to liberate. So if they could liberate France, because the Germans had taken over France, it was the center of, of Europe, um, it, was also, it was also the, the, the financial capital. If you can liberate France, if you can liberate your area, you will be able to, um, to prosper. So the goal here is I'm going to create a beachhead, a, a starting point, in order to get to know everybody in my community. And I'm going to do that because I want to liberate my community. I want the community to be liberated by me, by, by my skills, by, by, by what I can offer the community. And obviously that comes with the responsibility. So how do we start? And this is going to take us, I'm going to do questions and answers soon. But if we look at what happened in June the 6th, 1945, we see that when they decided to go to France, they had a multiple, multiple prong approach. As an agent today, you can't have one prong. You have to have many strategies for your area. And that's another big idea I want to show this morning. I'm going to show you that most agents go, if you do door knock, you don't, you don't do it with a plan. You just kind of like thumb suck an area, thumb suck a street, start walking, be completely disappointed by number five. You're giving out business cards, which is also very, very old school, but it does have a place. And, and, you, and, and then after an hour or two, you, you're disillusioned, you go have coffee with your friends and you try and make, and you try and smooth over the bad experiences that you have. And then you, and then in your mind, you say, this prospecting doesn't work. That's what I've been doing. The problem is, um, is, is twofold. You don't have, you don't have different strategies. Doors are opening to you. People are communicating, but you've only got one specific pitch, one specific direction. And most of that is, can I do a free valuation for you? Or are you thinking of, of selling your house sometime in the future? Do you know anyone who wants to sell a house? Those are usually our three straws. And so we try and do a hard sell on the first appointment. And we wonder why people don't open doors to estate agents. And I'm going to show you how to get around that. But what we learned from Normandy is that they had a multiple approach. Um, they were called different, different, different countries landed at different parts of the beach. But the goal was the same. They were heading towards France. So you need to have a clear defined goal, but you need multiple strategies to be able to get to uh, your destination. And here we can see that they had paratroopers on the top left that landed uh, at, at a specific place. Then they had Utah where the American armies came in. Then the British landed at a specific place and the Canadians landed at another place. Um, and of course, there were different wars taking place on different parts of Europe because the Russians were coming from one side. But this was one big push uh, for, for, for victory. And I want to say that, and, and, and Dave, this is for your team. Collectively, um, united, you guys need to do a big push. I believe that with the market, I believe interest rates are going to continue to rise. I think sellers are going to be under tremendous pressure. And I think a lot of stocks are going to come in the market. But that people are not going to, sellers are not going to find you unless you're visible and you're out in the community. I'm telling you now, if, if there are people looking to sell in your community because they're under tremendous pressure, remember the interest rate doesn't just affect the bond. It affects your car, it affects your credit card, it affects your loans, it affects right across the board. My kids, I'm sitting in their flat today because they've got uninterrupted power. Um, they, they, bought, they bought a flat for $1.6 million about, uh, about a year ago. Um, their bond at that stage was 13000 Their bond today is 16000 so that's, that's 3,000 up on what they paid. Their car payments have gone up by 1,000. They're basically 6,000 rand um, that they have to come up with every month just because of the interest rate change. And ladies and gentlemen, that's, that's on, a, on a national level. There are people under pressure and they're waiting for you to show up at their door strategically with a value proposition that they're going to they're gonna know you, they're going to like you, and they're going to eventually trust you. So you need, to, you need to up your game in terms of getting to the community you need, to be you need to be reaching 20, 30, 50 people a week if you're going to take advantage of what's coming. And I really believe that this is a time that many of you watching this now, if you take my advice and you go into the field now, you're going to become very wealthy in the next 12 to 18 months. I, I, I truly believe that if I'm wrong, then you've lost nothing. If I'm right, you're going to become rich. But if you don't listen to me, you might just miss the wave that's coming. But I believe there's a big wave. These blackouts, are costing a lot of your small businesses money, revenue. Many small businesses are going to close. Those business owners uh, own homes. They're going to have to sell their homes. They might they might sell their home to save their business. They might just save their sell their home to save their name or their financial record. I believe we're in a time very similar to 2008 when the credit act kicked in and interest rates went up. 
I believe we're in a very similar place. So, so I'm going to be sharing with you in the next session um, the multiple strategies that you need to have. And, and again, another idea, don't have one strategy, have multiple strategies um, for, your, for what you want to do and in terms of taking your area. So I hope that this little beachhead, uh, I'm sowing the seed and I'm going to continue within the next session. But Dave, I think we've reached that place now where uh, I want to do 10. Yes. Hmm? yes, you hit your quarter two. Well done. Yeah, so, so I've just reached quarter two. And I think at this point, maybe um, if you've been taking notes, maybe you just want to ask me some questions regarding this, and then we'll take a break and then we'll come back and then I'll then I'll continue with the second session. So do we have any do you have any takers? Uh, I want I've always wanted to say this. Is there anybody online? Uh, what's on line one? Anybody want to ask a question? Maybe just break this down, Solomon. I see you coming online. Um, I like what I like what you're saying about having a multiple approaches, um, specifically when you're doing prospecting. Um, you know. Um, running away from that old ways of doing things and dropping, you know what you were saying about posts uh, on the post boxes and, and all that. Um, so I know for me, what, one of the things that's been very difficult is just breaking also some racial lines where people then, um, they actually do look at who you are your color of your skin, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's also lots of uh, security bars in complexes, houses, high walls, um, which really it's a reality and it's a, it's a real uh, 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 factor. So obviously I know uh, uh, um, contributing factors to this is that some of those things you actually try to avoid to engage into. So you, you're keeping everybody happy. <laughs> People are not upset that you do know that I don't like you, but you're still coming. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. Um, you know, recently I took one of the, the guys, uh, it was three, three of us, um, and we were doing prospecting, we we're doing drive throughs and all that. As soon as we took a break and parked uh, by the garage. We actually had police <laughs> standing next to us and wanting to know, what are you doing in this area? Um, so some of these are real, I mean, this is very good uh, in terms of, uh, you know, I will, I'm not gonna say uh, theory from an offensive point of view, but trying to put these into practice um, there's a lot of co uh, cost involved in terms of obviously uh, instilling the fear back to you, which you don't you don't want to have. Um, but trying to just overcome that, it's it's it's, it's a challenge. So, so Solomon, I often I often um, come back to this um, this scenario is, and and thank you thank you again for that. Yes, it's not it's, it's not as it's not as easy as I said, um, but uh, the, the the theory is that we have a multiple approach, and I think the question the question begs is what value are we adding? Are we entitled? You know, we live in a generation that's very entitled. That if I knock on a door, you should open. If I knock on a if if, if your property is for sale by another agent, you should let me in. So we we're very entitled, and we haven't yet earned the right. So what I'm going to show you in the next session is I'm going to show you how to add value to your community because nobody will turn away value. And again, yes, you, you, there, there are the racial differences and your difference in communities. Um, I'm sure it would be just as difficult for me to change, to go to another community and, and, and probably not be accepted. But if I, if I go with a value offering, I took a bag of food to any, any specific door and I said, look, I've got, a, I've got a beautiful Woolworths loaf of bread here and a milk. Are you interested in it? The chances are the doors will open and I'll, and I'll be able to communicate. So how do, we, how do we translate our services into value in order to get the attention of the client on the other side of the door, that he will at least listen to me for a few minutes. And that's what I'm going to be talking about in the next session. So I'm going to show you the multi-prong approach. Um, and, and I'm going to show you how to, how, if you add value, that more doors will open than if you're just knocking on the door to find out 
what is their property status. Who have I got here? I've got uh, Kieran, Mr. Naidu. Uh, yeah, just from my side, I think it's more of an observation mm. than a question per se. Um, but yeah, I just think I quite enjoy learning about history and stuff. So I'm actually really enjoying the comparison that you're making here. Oh, thank you. Um, and it's, it's something that I I've, I've, would have never thought to have looked at it in this way before. Um, but yeah, I think just from my side where you touched on the cold calling, I mean, David can tell you I've been on his team for a couple of months now and I've gotten through quite a lot of cold calls and just no success really. Yes. Um, most people don't really seem to be interested. So I think, yeah, I'd, from my point of view, I need to focus more on being uh, on being a visible face in the community more so than, than cold calling and that sort of thing. Yes, yes. Okay, so so again, your issue is not that you you, you don't have fear to go cold calling. You just not getting the you just not getting the results that you desire. So hopefully yeah. in the next session, I, I'm going to I'm going to equip you with some tools and and things that are out of the box. You know, we as I say, we often go out with just a business card, and then we wonder why the business card hasn't been effective. But imagine if you went with a with a with a whole lot of different tools. You know, in the Second World War, every soldier was equipped with a rifle, a water bottle, a grenade, a, a, a medical kit. A helmet and then and, and a radio. So you, you know we 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 going out as agents. We want to we want to uh, create a, an opportunity for ourselves. But we're going out with one little pen knife, you know. And that's what I want to show you in the next session. Which if you go out equipped, you're going to be able to have multiple conversations at different levels. And out of that, you, your your success rate should increase at least exponentially. Awesome. Okay. So, awesome. so so I'm looking forward to the next session, which we're going to do. I think, Dave, we're on 9.50. Uh, this is about break time for about 20 minutes for a grab of coffee. Um, uh, should we just give one? Um, I think Solomon had his hand up for the last question and we can end break. Yeah, sure. Sure. Solomon. Solomon. Solomon, are you there? Uh, no, no. I, I already raised my hand. I think it didn't move. Any of the, any of the ladies? I know we're going through, we're going quite fast. Um, but again, I'm, I'm, I'm doing frameworks for you guys here. And in the next session, I'll, I'll put some meat onto the bone. But uh, it's, it's the concept of, of planning and, and lead generation and then um, multiple multiple different uh, strategies. Prospect. That's why we call it strategic prospecting. That's what I want to leave with you in this session, those three thoughts. And then we'll... So, 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 so Lee, um, I don't agree. You're laying a really good foundation. There's a lot of detail and accountability that needs to happen after this, but you need to lay the theory as a foundation first. And then this is what, when we, when I work with the team and we all work together in the future, at least we can move <coughs> back to the family. So that's, that's what's important. Um, okay, um, so let's take a break now, um, Lee, and then um, should we sp uh, start at five past? I'm good, I'm, I'm on your call. Okay, let's, let's start at five past sharp, guys. Um, can we please do that at 13 minutes? Um, and then, um, yeah, and then we're going to finish at about 11.20 after 11.25 for them to have a five-minute break for them to um, grant, to, uh, sorry, Ulrich to, to join us. So let's do it. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's break and we'll see, see each other in, in 13 minutes. Thanks. So when you come back, I'm going, to give you, I'm going to give you some weapons or some tools, and I'm going to give you, so I'm going to give you a, a, a script that you can use and it's been successful for us over and over and over again. See you guys in the next